House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Hot today, everybody. Welcome to House to Home. And big news today as the government is releasing what is essentially version three, round three, however you look at it, of emergency rental assistance. That's a program that's coming out. So this definitely has implications on Guam. Liz and Gina are here. They're in the very comfortable and friendly confines of Remax Diamond Realty Guam. Half a day, ladies. Um, I wanted to talk about this rental assistance because at face value and everything, it's it's a wonderful program. It actually, in theory, protects both the tenant and the landlord and everything like that. But where where does it really um where does this really come into play? And I guess from from your perspective as as realty professionals, what could be the outcome of this? I think I think before we get into that discussion, one of the things I brought up uh, at one of the meetings was that as long as it, as long as this has guidelines, the, the monies go to the landlord. If it's if it's uh, rental assistance, is the money going directly to the landlord? Because prior to this, there were some assistance given for people to assist them in the process, but the monies never got to the landlord. So whatever it is that they're putting in place. As long as it goes to the in, the intent is there for the landlord. So if they're getting rental assistance and they don't pay the landlord, then what's the point? So hopefully they have something in place to cover that uh, part of it, so that the intent is uh, followed that the monies do go to the landlord. Because bear in mind they're suffering. They have some of them may not have paid their mortgage because you know they need the rent monies in order to do so. Mm -hmm. You, you know, Jason, and, and your statement said, you know, that this is to help both parties, the tenants and the landlords. Um, I just want to point out that until now, all the programs have out there have only been there to to support tenants and give monies to and, and you know, I mean, the families that were out of jobs because of, of poor government decisions by everyone. I think everyone has an equal uh, responsibility to, to, you know, for this, for what's going on. It wasn't just federal government. It's also been some really, uh, my opinion, bad decisions on our local government's part, but it has um, caused businesses to close down. And so for people whose hours were reduced, who lost their jobs, you know, rightly so that there were programs, uh, the PUA program, for instance, to take care of them so that they had monies coming in. But throughout that period, we kept hearing um, we kept hearing that the PUA payments, for the most part, was more um, than what the what the employee would have gotten if they were working. And yet, we're still talking about landlords not getting paid. You know, so there. I mean, I don't know what the percentage is of people who got more money out of PUA. Than they than they would have if they were actually working. I don't know what that percentage is. Perhaps Department of Labor has the ability to, to study this. I believe that, they told us it's 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 quite it's quite large. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So 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 we can say maybe to be, you know, to be fair, 70% of the population that were entitled to PUA were getting far more than what they would have earned if they worked, and yet. We still have issue with with rental payments not getting paid. Well, luckily enough, they're throwing more money at that issue. But what I wanted to point out is, you know, how horrible for landlords to be in a situation where they're completely have no control over the government stepping in and saying, you know what, great that you're a landlord, but we're not going to worry about you because you supposedly have money. Um, and, and then these landlords haven't been able to collect rent up until I think just this year, mm -hmm. it, it's just ridiculous. My, my question is, if these, if, la you know, we demonize our landlords and say they can afford it, they can afford not to get paid. Well, what if they're just like small business owners too, because it's essentially that's what they are. Some of them can afford to hang on. Most of them cannot. And if landlords were to drop out of the picture, what is going to happen to our island where, you know, not not every single one of us cannot afford to buy a home. And even if you could, we'd create a bigger disaster than what we're already looking at right now. 
Liz was studying her numbers. And what did you find, Liz? There's only about 75 homes for sale. Can you imagine that? Out of 187, only 75 are available, at least for rent. And then if for you're for sale. For, for sale. And then for rent, uh, there were like four houses that were available under 2,000. And for condos, there are about 66 available. You know, those are studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedrooms. So there were about uh, 66 of, of them currently available. And that is um, under 2,000. So the number- So about 45%, give or take, of Guam's real estate inventory market are, are for sale houses that you would have to pay a mortgage on the, that the remaining 65% would be, or 55% would be rentals. Yeah, which, right. and, which is that market that may be threatened, you're saying, uh, the both of you, if, um, you know, if, if they did not get paid. And Gina, I think you're absolutely right. We can't assume that landlords themselves aren't in the same position that they may live check to check. They may be waiting for, you know, that rental to come in so that they may pay, you know, the bank their, repay their loan for setting up, you know, that, that you know, 16 unit um, apartment complex. I mean, we, we, you know, we can't just blindly make that assumption. Right. So there's limitations. There are not that many out there. So, I mean, even now, even if they give these grants, it's supposed to help help them recover. So hopefully, like I stated, that they will have mechanisms in place so that they go to where they're due mm -hmm. versus, again, it being squandered on other items. That and again, I, I guess we should we should state that just like the first couple of rounds of this, this is by no means uh, your your rent is being waived. I mean, if, if they set it aside for 90 days, you still own 90 days uh, worth of tenancy and everything like that. They're just deferring it. Correct. Yeah, well, it's deferred right now. But now that they've uh, lifted the moratorium, so now things are back to where they're due. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully this will assist the island in getting caught up. Mm -hmm. basically to cover the landlord's um, mortgages. And now as realtors, you, you talk so often about, you know, home ownership and the American dream. And that, that's a very, um, you know, very proven concept and everything. But, but you know, in the, in the broader community of real estate, you know, in that business, right, in that industry on Guam and everything like that, what role do uh, landlords play? Because you said they are the majority. They're, they're filling the gap. I mean, if we didn't critical, have landlords, huh? Critical, would you say? It's critical. Yes. It's critical. Uh, you, you know what, Jace? Our military families who don't have housing on base are living in these rental units. Our Section 8 families who are low income families needing federal assistance are renting these units. Our regular folks that are out there in the community who cannot or may never ever be able to afford to buy because of the way things are going. They're renting from these landlords. These landlords fill a need in our community. The government, you, you know, for anybody out there who believes that the government could fill all the needs we have, they cannot. The government essentially was supposed to be set up to serve. And I think for the most part, they're starting to forget that, that that's their mission. You know, I mean, to me, that's their mission statement is to serve the community we're getting lost with that, but but landlords feel that need. They feel the housing needs of any community that they're in. And if we lose landlords because we demonize them and nobody wants to be a landlord anymore, God help us. Mm -hmm. And we're, there is a big shortage as we uh, mentioned the different numbers. So where are these people going to go? Is the government going to have an open house where you can... You know, we're even having problem with the homeless right now. There's a, many homeless. What did they say the last time was like over a thousand? I'm not sure what the most current count is, but they're lining up to try to get these temporary housing for a short period until they can get back on their feet. The government can't even sustain that because there's a big waiting list. So if we're looking at a shortage of rentals, where are they going to go? Well, I think if we learned anything here today, ladies, it's that uh, landlords are are essential in their own way and essential to the island, uh, the island's economy and the island's community. So I'll tell you what, you guys, if if you are renting next time you, you see your landlord, make them a batch of cookies and then give it to them from six feet away because it's the right thing to do. <laughs>
<laughs> give give them a special mask and say, let them know you appreciate them because you know they they are working really hard just like the rest of us. So Liz, Gina, thanks as always. We will see you guys next time. Thank you, Jason. Bye, Jason. Bye.